Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel of Bethel Evangelical Free Church Hanley. I'm Pastor Gervais Charmley, and this is another historic church in Rutland. Now, we've seen a number of these Rutland churches, and as I said before, Rutland is very wealthy in the 13th, 14th centuries. Now, the church here, this is St. Mary's Greetham. There's a church built here in the 12th century and rebuilt in the 13th century. The 13th century church is very similar to this, but smaller. The, much of the tower is of that date. And it's then extended in the 14th century. It's one way you can see we've still got wall plaster. It is whitewashed. Who knows what's underneath? The trouble with exposing wall painting is, is, is you've got to do massive, massive restoration afterwards. So we'll have a look around and see again what we can see in this building. As usual, then, we start at the West End, and you can see that we've got these Victorian pews in two sections here. The rear pews have been removed and replaced with chairs. This has really two great functions. One of them is that it limits where people can sit, and the other is it means you've got a more flexible space that you can do stuff with. The font is the oldest thing here, and the font dates from the... 12th century, so you've got these grotesque masks. It's always like the, the top of a Roman column in its design. Organ at the east end here in the south aisle. And let's proceed back as we normally do. Now, there we have the Mother's Union banner, and here we have the War Memorial. Um, we have up here... Um, Georgian Royal Arms, GR, Fear Guard, Honour the King. And so many churches, they, you want to have refreshments, so you need somewhere to cook the kitchen here, and your WC, of course. Um, in the aisle here, we have, here is a 20th century nativity window. and a communion table at the end. Here's a niche up there. The pulpit is 17th century, as so many, of course, are. Um, and behind we have memorial. Very nice 18th century piece there with a, a two um, putty. Putty, often people refer to them as cherubs, but they're putty. Um, cherubim, of course, are mighty angels, and they are clearly not mighty angels. Um, and so into the chancel, relatively sh uh, shallow. You can see there's a, an arch there which suggests something has been removed, uh, whether it's a window or a side chapel, I don't know. Um, the chancel has been panelled with 17th century curious carvings. You can see there's Adam and Eve being kicked out of uh, Eden. And underneath we have Noah's Ark. It's all in a rather naive style as it's been put. Um, what do we have here? Um, <laughs> not always meet obviously what you've got going on, but we have people with big heads. <laughs> and here we have Daniel in the lion's den. A lot of fun, really. Um, ah, yes, here we have um, the sort of, well, golden calf, looks like, and it looks like someone's about to take an axe to it, and quite right, too. Um, <laughs> so that is, and if you west, you can see we've got the some internal supports, internal buttresses for the tower, because you need to have quite a lot of support for a, a church tower, particularly if you've got bells in there that are being rung because ringing bells, you've got all that movement high up in the tower, and it does put a stress on the, the tower. That's why church towers have to be carefully maintained, because otherwise you can get what did happen quite a lot in the 18th century, they didn't do enough maintenance, that these things would come down. And so we have the organ here, um, which the organ 
It was restored in 1992. Two manual pedal board. And there we have back here and we've got the thon. We haven't just got the thon, have we? Because what else do we have in the west wall here? We have the remains, the few remains of the older building you've got. And that's a part of a cross up top there. Um, and then lower down you've got part of a top of a doorway and some other bits and pieces of Norman carving. So very old historic building here at Gorritum. So now we're outside at uh, Gorritum. You have to pardon any aircraft noises. There are air bases around here and they are flying jet fighters. Um, you see here this beautiful 13th century tower. The spire is not original for the tower, it's put on it a bit later. Um, there is a story that what happens is King Edward is, is visiting and he says, I think the church could do with a, a spire. Let's put a spire on the church and that's what they do. Um, is that the case? Well, certainly it happens for some reason. The clear study, of course, is 15th century. And so it, it is again, it's one of these big Rutland churches. And it's quite a surprise to people visiting Rutland today. You've got all these big, posh churches in this teeny tiny county, but it's a very rich county. It's a county that's there's a lot of royal connections. A county where you, yes, you can have a, an Archbishop of Canterbury and Chancellor of England come from here. And so there's money. And medieval money means medieval piety, means medieval churches. So let's have a look on the outside and see again what we can see. Well, Greece is certainly not the biggest, of course, of these Rutland churches, but it is just as impressive as the others. And again, you can see the old roof line there. Uh, the, uh, well, in fact, you see two old roof lines on the tower. Um, and as we, what we'll do is we'll go round past the porch first so we can look inside. And, yeah, you, you've got this uh, organ chamber vestry sticking out on the side. You see, oh, yes. <laughs> You can see that where the patching is, and there would have been a side chapel, and it's just been removed, and a rather untidy bit. <laughs> so we go past the porch, and it's well-worn pillars, and sheltering within the 13th century doorway. The door is much more modern, but the doorway is 13th century. And up, Oof. see again, the, the brooch spire does tend to feel quite heavy simply because it comes all the way out to the edge of the tower and sort of drips over the edge. We have a corner stair turret here because you've got to get up there somehow and the clock. And all of this is done. And one of the things about this is it's all done with uh, what we would think is relatively primitive instruments. Yes, they got uh, nettle tools, but uh, today we ha have all these. Uh, they didn't have spirit levels. They didn't have any of the laser stuff we got today. So it does always rather amuse me when you have these people looking at things from the Mayans or the Aztecs, the Incas, say, "Oh, the Egyptians. Oh, oh how could 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 people without modern tools have done this?" Well. Because people didn't have modern tools, they had to be creative. Today, you don't do this sort of thing on the whole without modern tools because you've got modern tools. Use what you've got. Um, and these these ancient, these Mayans and Aztecs, they're no more mysterious than the medieval builders who built our parish churches and cathedrals. So here we are, the north side. Um, and you can see the clear street with its little little quatrefoil windows. Corbel table. Oop. Um, north doorway here has been blocked in. As we said before, it basically doesn't have much of a function post-Reformation because its main function is to do with the um, exorcism in baptism. And that just doesn't happen post-Reformation. It's seen as what it is actually, it's rather superstitious and weird. Um, and here we go around, you see here where a, a big older window opening, 14th century window opening has been filled with a smaller window 
at some point. And again, there would have been a medieval structure where the vestry is, although this modern vestry is Victorian. Because what happens is that they get knocked down um, post-Reformation, often they're just not kept up. The uh, uh, clergyman lives nearby and he just comes over in his uh, gown and preaches. He doesn't need a special place to change, it's only the Victorians when they reintroduce these medieval style vestments that they say we need a vestry. But also you, you get this idea that, um, now of course, Anglican vestries are very different in that sense from nonconformist ones because actually, of course, nonconformists don't do vestments on the whole. Anglicans do. So that is the outside here at Gritum. Gritum. So here, there you have it, St. Mary the Virgin, Gritum. Another one of these big, impressive Rutland churches. And it is such a typically Rutland church. You'll find buildings like this in the relevant part of uh, in the neighbouring part of Lincolnshire as well of course but you find, uh, this Rutland type. So thank you for watching and may God bless you and keep you until next time.